what the hell are we doing? It's three o'clock in the morning at a Walmart. Yeah, so we're going to buy another car down in Iowa. Getting on the road early this morning. So uh, we're going to be meeting up with my Uncle Jim, getting in the big rig, and heading down to Iowa. You guys will see what the car is when we get there, but I got a feeling everybody's going to like it. Peter and I left the Walmart parking lot and headed down to Columbus, Wisconsin to meet up with my Uncle Jim. We were supposed to meet him there at about 6 o'clock, but we got there about 15 minutes early to go raid the gas station and get some snacks. Alright, there's Uncle Jim. It's now uh, almost 6 o'clock. Peter and I just got food. <laughs> so we're going to go hop in and see you guys in Iowa. After jumping in the dually, we headed south down 151 towards Iowa. The views are always really good going through southwestern Wisconsin, especially crossing the Mississippi River into Dubuque. When we got to my uncle's buddy's house, we took a quick look over the car and started loading it up on the trailer. You guys will see it here for the first time as we push it up onto the trailer. As a lot of you can probably tell by now, this is a 1967 Chevy Chevelle. The car also came with an old school small block Chevy 350 with a turbo 350 transmission. After loading the car up and getting it strapped down, and after going to grab a quick bite to eat for lunch, me and Peter and Uncle Jim started on our trip back to Wisconsin to see if we could get back home before dark to get the car unloaded with a little bit of daylight left. Yeah. How's it look under there? It's still there. The car didn't run away, as you can see. Yeah, the car's still there. If the back ones are tight, the front ones are probably tight too, huh? Probably. I think that's how that works. Well, we tried to make it back in uh, daylight, but it's uh, there's a little bit of daylight, but not much, basically, is what we're dealing with. It should be all right. I think Peter's in the back firing up the tractor so we can pull the motor out of the back of the truck right here in the driveway. We got the yard light. That'll make things a little easier. Just gonna leave it. We're just gonna leave it hang there for now. All right. Tip, what are you doing? She had to have been microwaved as a puck. Are you stunned? <laughs> Say you're stunned without saying you're stunned. All right, guys. So we made it back to Peter's house with the uh, new Chevelle here. Figured I'd just give a little walk around to the car now that it's outside and I've had a chance to look it over and we we kind of put some of the trim and just set it on there to get an idea what the car is going to look like. But I'll flip the camera around here, give you guys a walk around, and we'll uh, take a look at what we got to work with here. Alright, so there's the uh, some of the trim that we got put on. We put the grill and a bunch of the trim. We got it laid out around the windows and everything. And uh, there's a couple pieces still missing. I'll show you guys. There's a whole bunch of stuff in the trunk. The car came with a bunch of pieces. Um, we'll just work from front to back. Just wanted to take a look at the front here first because, well, as soon as I start opening doors and whatnot, this is probably going to, some of this is going to fall off. But we got, uh... yep, there we go, it fell off. There's the, uh, the engine bay. The firewall is in the process of being replaced. So we'll have to go and weld that in. Basically the car, um, my uncle's friend had the car for 20 years and before that it had been sitting in a driveway for 12 years. So the car has been sitting for a real long time. Yeah, it's a very beautiful car. I will say it probably looks a little bit better on camera, but there's not, I mean, this is, a lot of the extent of the body damage on it. There's a little bit of rust in the fenders, but it's about a million times nicer than anything I've ever owned. So the floor currently is just bolted in. It is not welded. The original floor was cut out. Um, all the spot welds were drilled out. It was done the right way. So it'll make it really easy to put a new floor in. There's a panel up here to go up onto the firewall. And it looks like I may need to get that same panel the passenger side 
It'll probably need new door panels. These are the door panels that are the original door panels. They're, I don't know if we'll be able to save them or not, but that's fine. We'll probably, I won't say we'll fully gut the interior because I want to keep a lot of the stuff here, but we'll try and lighten things up a little bit. Probably get rid of these big heavy seats. I bet each one of these seats weighs 75 pounds, so. The back seat will probably end up coming out eventually. I am planning on back having the car and tubbing it so if we can keep the back seat we will if not well it's got a full dash in it we'll try and see if we can hook as much of that up as we can and keep that working the doors closed this door I think needs to be adjusted a little bit it's a little wobbly but the doors close really nice so here's all the parts that we got in the back again we kind of laid some of the trim on the back of the car just to take a look at it We got a whole whole bunch of parts. We got interior pieces, parking brake, and uh, headlights, some of the factory wiring. None of that, none of the factory wiring is probably ever going to get used. Some engine accessory stuff. The car did come with a whole 350 and turbo 350 transmission. Probably not going to use that because I'm going to be taking the drivetrain out of this car. Again, my, my main plan is to sell this as a roller, but if it doesn't sell... I'll probably start pulling parts and pieces out of it to fix what needs to be fixed on this. Not much, probably the windshield would be the big thing. But here's the wiring harness for the car. And this just comes with, I mean, basically everything you could ever want for wiring. I think it's a complete wiring harness, fuse block. Comes with all the sockets for everything and the back of the car all the wires are like a build-it-yourself wiring everything it's got fuses battery cables instructions and it's it can be run with EFI so we can wire this up with the EFI LS engines eventually I'd like to repaint the whole car I think I'd probably keep it this color cuz man I love this color it looks if I stand back here a couple feet, I mean, it, this looks really, really good. Oh, that fell apart, but in the sunlight, this thing looks amazing. It looks really, really good, and it's dusty right now, too, with a, with a wash. This will look, this will come around really good. I mean, other than some really minor imperfections in the paint, that doesn't even show up on the camera. There's some scratches and stuff. It's just right where I don't need to be afraid to take it into a Walmart parking lot and have to park it all the way in the back of the lot. I can just park it in the parking lot, and if somebody brushes by it or door dings it a little bit, I won't be too mad. Maybe a little bit. The windows all roll down. <laughs> The window in the back rolls down too. The door sounds really good. Listen to this. That's what a muscle car door sounds like. It's got keys for it. But uh, I think the wiring harness comes with a new ignition switch and new keys. So got it. you got your the round key and the square key. The round key does not work in the doors. But the ignition works cigarette lighter works I'll probably try and convert the cigarette lighter into a USB charger and maybe try and figure out how I can plug the Terminator X into the car or plug my computer into the Terminator X through the cigarette lighter I'll show you guys how to maybe do that later we got wiper switch works headlight switch works it's got a full dash in it somebody had taken and given it a tachometer which is pretty sweet. I'll probably get a, a bigger tack with a shift light for drag racing, but it's got a speedometer. I don't know if we'll try and get that working or not. Might be fun to try. Fuel gauge, we'll try and get that to work. There's nothing in there. That's probably where we'll end up mounting the ECU. 
is up in the glove box. Run all the wiring through the dash. All right, guys. I think that's going to do it for today's video. Just gave you a quick walk around of the car. Kind of some of the basic plans on what I'm planning on doing with the car. But um, not entirely sure what's going to happen first. Whether it's going to just get turned into like a more of a daily driver car. Or whether it's going to go straight into race car mode. Um, we'll figure that out in the days to come here. <clears throat> and then record the process as we work on it. So hope you guys um, are excited for this build. As excited as I am. I'm super excited to start working on this car. Be sure to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, keep watching our videos. Um, it'll be another summer of wrenching on a car, but man, this one's really nice and I can't wait to dig into it. See you guys in the next video.